Right now, we are witnessing YouTube history as YouTube's biggest creator, their golden boy, Mr. Beast, is facing some incredibly damaging accusations. But yeah, welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you haven't heard, Dogpack has released a second video exposing Mr. Beast, and it is not looking good. I know the meme going around is that it's over, it's finally over. It is not over. Mr. Beast has some serious allegations that he needs to respond to. We are primarily going to be talking about Dogpack's video in this video, but I'm going to link his video in the description down below because I highly recommend that you go and watch it because it's quite an emotional video and it really expresses just what is going on behind the scenes at Mr. Beast. I've waited a long time to talk about a lot of this publicly, so thank you for doing what you're doing. But with Dogpack's video, he interviews a former Mr. Beast employee known as Jake Weedle, who worked there from the year 2019 to 2020. And it's only now, with everything going on, that these stories are finally getting the attention they deserve. And what's been going on behind the scenes at Mr. Beast is honestly just absolutely disgusting. I think, honestly, the most alarming thing that has come out of this video is that they hired a known PDF file. And he was so known and buddy buddy with everyone that they actually nicknamed him Delware because he legally could not go back to that area the idea that jimmy didn't know or that jimmy was covering stuff up he didn't want stuff to come out you know he's very careful about his image you know the tangible proof that he knew but covered it up you know how do you prove that you know well there was a known defender registered sex offender convicted sex offender on the registry and everything who worked there. But that guy, from what I hear, like, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they knew that. And he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. He'll be in videos. He'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? How much more can you literally cover up a offender with a physical mask? Like, do I have to, is, how, is it more on the nose or? <laughs> Even if that guy didn't do anything, they still knew about it and he was still around. And what if he's one of the people in the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. I don't think there's actually any excuse here as to why he was even on the channel in the first place. You can't even give Mr. Beast the benefit of the doubt that he wouldn't have known. Back in 2019, 2020, the videos he was producing were on a lot smaller of a scale of production. He would have had to have known everyone who was working on the videos and to even feature in the videos, you would have had to have been quite buddy buddy with Mr. Beast himself. And with everything coming out about Ava's Discord server, which was already creepy enough, you now have someone who is actually on the registry for doing some Something inappropriate with a child is actually working on your videos with you. It's really not looking good for Mr. Beast, but there's a lot more in this video we're going to talk about. Like, I just can't get my head around it that the fact you have someone in your group and you have a nickname for him because they legally can't go back somewhere because they did something terrible with a child. Like, what is going on? And as well, he's the manager. What was the, what was his video ideas? Lock me in five nights at Freddy's with a hundred children? What? You've even got people on the production team allegedly being really creepy to the female contestants. 100 boys versus girls video. Uh, I have people corroborating the same story that the, the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You, know, you, you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and, and then you try to them. Even just reading this text message out down here, did you see or hear anyone on the production staff acting inappropriately with contestants? Yes, I don't remember his name, but the guy who gave the girl a drone in the video was constantly coming into the circle and being very flirtatious with some of the girls, which was so weird given the circumstances. I remember hearing girls joking about Stockholm Syndrome, but given how many of us were sleep deprived and high on paint fumes, it honestly makes sense. You also hear about how they were outright neglectful to medical needs, which really annoys me because I'm diabetic myself. And if I was in one of these challenge videos and they weren't giving me my insulin, Jesus Christ, I would absolutely lose my shit. 
But moving on, in the video, Jake goes on to explain how he was finally given a chance to be in a video and not be left out for the chopping room floor in editing post-production. And the video was an isolation video. You go into a room for X amount of days, and it's basically a see how long you can last to win a lot of money. It's just a standard Mr. Beast video, you know? Big challenge, big reward. But Jake explains how disastrous this video was. He goes on to explain how he was told he'd have a hot tub in the room and an ice cream machine. Things to keep him entertained and would look good for the video. But the reality of it was the hot tub wasn't filtered properly or even heated to levels that would be considered a hot tub. The ice cream machine, when it was on, would be so loud it would keep him awake, and if it went off, it would just begin to smell. I mean, he even went as far as to ask the production staff if he could turn the lights off so he could sleep, and they said no because they needed the time-lapse shot. And it got to a point where, like, they weren't they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we like, have like nighttime hours? You know, and they said no because it would fuck up the time-lapse shots. The time-lapse of what, me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a, a it's like, oh, you're gonna get XYZ hours of sunlight. Oh, great! Why well, don't know how they figured that one out? I didn't have it. <laughs> you know, I did, one of the things was you got to take away your clock, so you didn't know what time it was. Okay, I got no access to sun. I got no access to clock. I don't know, like, the, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep. And I, I have insomnia problems now, um, it, but I, I, they might have started there. I had good people looking out for me. I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we got to stop. So I, I, um, I just wanted to turn the lights off. And I'm, I'm vocalizing to people. I wish the lights would turn off. And I go up to my friend, my, 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 my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're giving me, you know, melatonin, you know, it's not helping, you know. And then, and then Jimmy would come in like every other day for like an hour. You know, to check in on me because he's doing other stuff. You know, I'm just sleep deprivation is banned by the Geneva Convention as a form of harm to someone who is a prisoner. I can't say the word, but you know which it is. The thing is, looking back now on every single Mr. Beast style challenge video, whereas before you would have seen just a bit of fun, wow, that looks great, you can win a lot of money, look at how much fun everyone is having, is now with all these new accusations that have come out and allegations that you just look at these challenge videos and you think th these are just like some squid game level challenge. Like no one in these videos were having a good time. No one went into these videos thinking, oh, hey, I'm going to be absolutely messed up after I've been on these videos. And I understand Mr. Beast has to have a level of challenge in these videos. He's giving away a lot of money, but they shouldn't be at the cost of someone's health. Like, come on, dude. The thing is as well, it doesn't even stop there. After Jake was severely sleep deprived from the fact that he didn't even have a clock in the room with him, he didn't even know what day it was, Mr. Beast came in with two briefcases, one for the challenge and one for whatever. And what he wanted Jake to do after he'd been through this horrific ordeal was to run a marathon on a treadmill. He goes, you're gonna, you're gonna run a marathon. You're gonna do the two... 22.6k, whatever it is. And you're gonna do it on that treadmill over there. You've got someone who's already sleep deprived, doesn't even know what day it is, what time of day it is, and you're asking him to run a marathon on a treadmill. And obviously this didn't go down well, Jake attempted to do it, but by the time he actually finished and gave up, he apparently had blisters on his feet and he couldn't walk. After Jake had left the challenge, people actually reached out to him to make sure he was okay, and these were what the text messages said. Hey Jake, hope you're doing okay. Meg and I just wanted to check on you, to which he responded with, Hey, I'm good and I appreciate that. I'm not exactly 100%. I feel like mentally I'm still recovering a bit. I'm back in therapy and my therapist is concerned, but my legs and joints feel better. Like, I can walk, but my feet are still covered on those blisters and those hurt to walk on. But I was told the best thing to do is to stay off my feet and let them heal. I'm with my family at the moment. Also, it will be like a month before I get the money and they aren't giving me all the money. They are giving me up to what I won to the point in the game, which was also a slap in the face, but hey, I'm out, I'm alive. 
To which they then responded with, therapist knows and cares about you. The whole thing was fricked and honestly frick them for not giving you the money. Meg and I are wishing you the best. With your recovery, please feel free to reach out if you ever need anyone to talk to or need a place to crash in New York. Mr. Beast has to drop a response to these allegations. There is no way he can just ignore this. Jake even goes on to say that after he had left the challenge, he was in a room with Mr. Beast and he had his family and friends there and he looked over and Jimmy was just sat in a chair like he was an evil Lex Luthor. And then came across very disingenuous when he actually had any care for Jake. He honestly seemed more frustrated by the fact he'd actually left the challenge than his mental and physical well-being. I mean, a really sad aspect of this video is how Jake talks about a time where he was doing work behind the scenes at Mr. Beast with another fellow friend of his who had a kid he had to look after at the time. Jake goes on to say how he was getting paid more than his friend when they were essentially doing the exact same job. And Jake, credit to him, actually said, that's not fair, let's go talk about this, there's a writer's guild, this is why there is a writer's guild, in a sense, so people can get fair treatment when they're working on something which is creating content. Jake even says himself he was just a dumb kid, he didn't really care about this job, but his friend, who had a kid to actually look after, he just felt it was unfair that he was getting paid more for doing the same job. How can sell a writer, Mike? It's, it's fucked up, you know, that that's how the pay is, and I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I don't have a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He was just... just I, know, I like my job, I like my job because... I mean, this just does not look good for the Mr. Beast team. The fact that your employee has come to you and said, hey, I would like you to increase the pay of my friend here because we're doing the same job as each other, yet I'm on more money, and quite frankly, he needs it more than me because he has a kid he needs to look out for. And the response to that was the fact that he actually didn't even want to be in that room, he just didn't want to rock the boat, he wanted to just support him as a friend, was the fact that they both just got a severance check and were just dismissed. The pay was necessarily like a 10 grand increase it could have been just it's just basically to make it equal to make it fair i generally just feel really bad because this person didn't even want to be in the meeting with jake here he only wanted to support his friend he didn't want to rock the boat he didn't want to lose his job and by simply just showing support to his friend and what he believed was right they both lost their job and were just given a severance check and told to pack their bags and leave it's it's messed up but he said, hey man, if that's how you feel, you know, like if that's like, I, you know, I trust you, and he, he stood with me. He went to that writer's, he went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew, if I knew he was going to lose his job too, I wouldn't have done it. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? And I really regret, I really regret that. The whole situation is honestly just terrible and I feel really bad for the amount of people who are probably going to have similar stories like this and just haven't found their voice yet to come out. I don't want this to be a video that sends hate to anyone. I even don't want people to send hate to Mr. Beast, but at the same time, he definitely needs to answer some questions as to what is going on behind the scenes at his channel. Please go and check out Dogpack's video and Jake's video. He's also put out a video on his channel talking about the whole situation. So be sure to go and check that out. Like and subscribe on this video. It really helps me out. I would love to hear as well what you have to say about this entire situation because it really is YouTube history at the moment. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all next time.